a prototype supercharger kit. I just want to live inside of here. Okay, okay, that is scary. How'd we do? No. Clean, zero knock all the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to part three of my C63 adventure here at Modern Masters in West Virginia. If you guys were around for part two, then you know that my 57,000 mile used engine is basically a gigantic dual overhead cam, beautiful paperweight. It has some cylinder damage and can't be ran reliably. Now I ended the last video on kind of a cliffhanger because I didn't know exactly how this was going to get handled. Uh, basically I bought this engine from GM Outlet who normally source LS engines and other LS swap engine parts. So they basically brokered the deal and found a salvage car recycler that had an engine out of a wrecked 2010 E63 with only 57,000 miles. Uh, so after a little bit of back and forth last night and this morning, GM Outlet did verify that they are looking for a new engine. They're just gonna do an even swap. So they're just gonna take care of it, which is fantastic. Also, we figured out why this engine had rust in it. So the place that pulled the engine out of the wrecked E63, they did say that after they pull the engines, they pressure wash them. So I just placed a 156 intake manifold on this to show you. Um, but basically, if they were missing the plastic intake piece that goes right here and they pressure washed, water would have gotten inside of here. It could have been at some kind of angle. And if there were valves open on this side, that would make sense. That would mean water would come in through here and cause rust to form around the steel rings, which would in turn rip apart the cylinder as soon as it moved. And here is the other cylinder, not in good condition. I definitely don't want to give away a car with an engine like this. It would probably run. It might be okay for a little while, but that's not legit. So the C63 giveaway that I'm doing with modsandmiles.com will be extended for about 30 more days, which gives you guys more time to earn entries and it's totally free to enter. I'll leave that link down below. But for now, we are going to put together an amazing E63 with a gigantic blower using Hellcat parts. Uh, we're gonna get it on the road. We're gonna do a ton of work in this video. It's gonna be a blast. And I gotta say, I am a little disappointed though I don't get to drive the C63. But the silver lining here is that now I have a couple of days to help the guys here at Modern Masters finish this, a 2011 E63 AMG. So this car has the same engine as the C63, the M156, a 6.2 liter dual overhead cam V8. And these are naturally aspirated. And this one is stock outside of head studs in preparation for this, a prototype supercharger kit designed and built by VRP. So Phil at VRP has been working on this uh, for about three years now. This is one of a kind and it utilizes a Gen 5 brand new Whipple supercharger. So this is a very, very efficient supercharger and he's using some inspiration from the Hellcat and some parts right from the Hellcat, including these intercoolers that have been proven to work very well with big boost and high horsepower cars. So here's the lid for the supercharger. This was all drawn up on CAD and designed in house. It's really, really impressive. So look at the runners. These are custom fuel rails that they made. And then here is the Whipple down below. And the idea here is efficiency. So they could have put this kit out a long time ago, but it's gone through so many iterations to get cooling down and to make sure that this new style blower doesn't have a hard time producing a ton of power. And they have been back and forth with the guys here at Modern Masters for literally years, coming out here and 3D scanning the factory intake manifold, the cylinder heads. These are the 3D scan little dots here so the machine knows how to pick it up. And this is just a piece that they built out of plastic, 3D printed to measure for clearance. So a lot of thought went into this. And honestly, I'm honored that I'm here to put this final iteration together. And we're gonna get this thing on the dyno, drive it. We already have a base tune. This is gonna be great, guys. I'm really excited to bring you guys this content, especially considering that if things didn't go south with the C63, I wouldn't be doing this. So this is maybe fate, I don't know, but I'm really excited to be part of putting this back together and I, I get to drive it. Right, Greg? Can I drive oh, it? Can I think about it? No, just say yes, please. All right, all right. Thanks, man. I'll if buy you a Philly cheesesteak. I will take you up on that. Okay. I will. All right. Well, we're done working over here for now. I've got the bumper back on. We just got to throw wheels out and then this is going outside until we find a new motor. I was seriously so excited to drive the C63 home that I even brought the best phone mount in the world 
from Pro Clip USA. And you know what? I might not be able to install the engine right now. I'm gonna install this phone mount, that's for sure. These are by far the best phone mounts on the market. It's a two-part system that's specifically made for your car and they install in literal seconds. So after you snap in the base, you install the phone holder with a few screws, slide in your phone and you're done. And since you order the phone holder specifically for your iPhone or Android, you get a solid and secure fit every time. I installed one of these on a really cool Coyote powered F-150 that we had some fun with off road and check out how rigid the mount is. I'm bouncing around a ton, but this thing is rock solid. <laughs> Look at that. I also installed one on a friend's modified C63 with race starts and the insane launch doesn't move the mount at all. I've installed many phone mounts from ProClip USA, including one on my wife's supercharged Escalade. And the final result is a phone mounting system that fits seamlessly into your car's dash or console and doesn't look like an afterthought like so many of the other mounts you see on the market. Now the best part is, well actually there's two more best parts. You can get a wireless charging phone mounts. Those are really cool as well. And I'm gonna leave you guys a link down below and a coupon code, it's legit15, and that's gonna get you 15% off their entire website, but it's for a limited time. So act now and get yourself the best phone mount ever made from ProClip USA. All right, guys, let's get right to work. Being a prototype kit, there are always little modifications that need to be made before it gets put into production, and they're almost there, um, but we are gonna be installing this very nice billet piece that VRP just finished up, and that is to fit the fuel pressure sensor. So they had just kind of rigged this up in order to get this running, but we have time now so we can install this piece here but we need to go get it welded first all right so we got to remove this fuel rail and we're going to bring it to a shop to get it tig welded it needs to go right here this is the loudest electric ratchet in the world okay we got that so basically this fitting is going to be moved over to this end and this end's getting welded to the rail Craig came over here to finish finish the cut. So we're gonna be moving this fitting over a little right about here-ish. And then on the final product, this is where it's gonna sit and then your 90 fitting will come off. Yeah, so the production kit will come with the rails with this already complete. We're still just kind of test fitting at this point. All right guys, so this piece is all TIG welded together. And now if this lines up on the engine, we know we're in good shape and Craig can send this into VRP so they can start producing the fuel rails with all of this already in mind. So it's a direct bolt on. All right, we're back with the fuel rails so we can start assembling that. And right now I'm going to swap out this coolant sensor. As you can see, it's leaking and it's right underneath the blower, so it's definitely a good thing to do now. We gotta get this pulley out of the way in order to get the sensor out. All right, let's get this guy out of here. There we go. Rusty, this thing's got coolant in it, doesn't it? It does. You wanna just do a quick swap or You think we could do it in like two seconds? I think we can. I think so too. So we're in kind of a bit of a hurry here. We're trying to make it to the dyno. And the weather might be turning. Go, go, go. Oh, that's not bad. We basically didn't lose anything on that. It's too easy. Click. Plug that guy in. All right, now we can go back together with this pulley. Now that we don't have a coolant leak anymore. There we go. Oh yeah. All right, so we're putting a little bit of dielectric grease on the fuel injector O-rings. Just a good lubricant before you put a fuel rail on. Yeah, we don't have any of that 15-year-old grease you have around here. Oh, the Mercedes grease? Yeah. yeah. I've been using that same tub probably over 15 years now. It's insane. But a lot of people think of this as just using on electrical components, but it just works well for lubricating rubber and seals and whatnot as well. The rails have these little fittings on them as well. 
So you have an O-ring going into there, and then the O-ring from the injector seals inside. So another rail fits in like so, and most fuel rails just have two connection points, one at one end, this one has four. This is a super heavy duty rail, and these are 630 cc injectors. Um, should be able to handle a decent amount of power, but this is just being ran on 93 octane for now. And at a very low boost setting, I think they're only gonna be running like four or five PSI. We were gonna work outside, it's a beautiful day, but then it started raining. So we had this thing kind of half out over here and hopefully it clears up so we can take this thing for a rip. Oh, and check this out. This is another 3D printed part that they use to fit the blower snout in here. That way they could line up the pulleys and the belt. So right now we're installing this front fitting for the fuel line. And here is the little bypass valve right in the back. So just look at the craftsmanship. Look at how much work went into this. The details are just insane. And this is really nice. It has a reusable seal here so you don't have to mess around with our TV or anything. And look at this guy. It just wants to compress all the air. It's angry. I will compress you now. It's totally normal, Rusty. All right, I'm a normal person. <clears throat> Is this why you don't normally eat lunch? No, I don't eat any lunch ever. I just talk to engine parts and they talk to me back, okay? I'm not crazy. So this is the main feed for the fuel and it goes to a little Y connection here into the back of the rail. And then this is what we call a looped fuel rail. So the fuel is gonna go here, 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 just in a nice, a nice little loop. So these M156 engines are not direct injected. These are just normal port fuel injectors. So very affordable. And you can swap these out for much bigger ones as well. And that might be in the future with some E85. So from what we understand, this blower is not actually going to make any noise. What we've read is that it makes zero blower wine noise, which I kind of find hard to believe. I don't even understand how they can get rid of that, but there are some cars with like 1,000, 1,100 horsepower that use this same blower and they don't make any noise or they make a different kind of supercharger noise. It's, I don't know, I've never seen one of these in person. This is kind of a new supercharger. It's their Gen 5. So we're gonna find out what this sounds like in this video. I mean, we're, we're ripping this car. It's going on the dyno. You guys are gonna see everything. Um, and it's gonna be running an open element air filter system, just kind of out here in the open for now. So if this is going to make any noise, we will definitely hear it. But even if we can't hear the supercharger, this thing has long tube headers and it's an M156. It's one of the best sounding naturally aspirated engines on the planet. And, and now it's getting a, a huge blower. All right, so we're about to bolt this blower back in. Just have a little bit of wiring here. So uh, this is the intake air temp sensor. It's usually located right back here at the back of the intake. Uh, no one seems to make an extension harness for these just yet. Uh, so it's just two wires. It's pretty easy. I just extended them to the front where the new uh, location is for the sensor, uh, right after the intercooler is in the front. And then this is an extension that VRP sold already. Um, it's a three wire and it's for the uh, map sensor. It extends it from the front. Uh, to the back of the blower where it is now. So are you guys running a factory map sensor or, or is it off yep. of something else? No, factory map sensor, we took it off of the original intake and it seems to be working just fine. So this is a big failure point on these engines as well. There are like a lot of failure points. Uh, this is a diaphragm for the PCV system. And when they go bad, you could get a lot of oil in your intake. And especially when you're boosted, you don't want anything falling out your spark plugs. You don't want any oil getting in anywhere. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and swap this out. This is an older one. All right, so here's the new piece. And everything on the M156 is AMG specific. This was the first engine designed solely by AMG. And then this one, we had to adjust it just a little bit to have clearance behind the uh, supercharger. So I'll just do a little bit of adjusting real quick. Match up the old one. More dielectrical grease to make good electrical contact with the PCV system. I'm just kidding, on multiple fronts. Obviously it's plastic, we don't need any electrical contact. Um, but dielectric grease is actually an insulator. So a lot of people think it's gonna make a better contact. It's mostly just for insulating the electrical connection. All right, so this snaps in the back and this is factory. This gigantic aluminum barb fitting right here that it snaps into, that's exactly what all M156s look like. It's so big it almost looks kind of aftermarket-y, but it is not. So if you guys are experiencing oil consumption or if you're seeing a lot of oil in your intake, you might want to swap this guy out. Definitely if you're doing a blower, then it's right there. So right now Rusty is vacuuming up these O-rings right there. So that's where the bolts are gonna go through to hold on to attach this to the cylinder head. 
and they use an O-ring, but this has been on and off. I mean, I don't know, you know, a few dozen times for test fitting and whatnot since it's the prototype. So we just need to swap those O-rings out now that we're pretty confident this is going to be it. So here is the map sensor and just take a look at the beauty inside. I mean, look at this piece. It's so nice. And they have these really clean fittings on the bottom. So this guy right here is for PCV. This one on the passenger side goes to the brake booster. And this guy here is for the EVAP. So it's all very simple. Honestly, this is just kind of an easy setup. You guys have seen some of the stuff I work on on my channel, especially some older 80s, 90s stuff where there's like 50 vacuum lines going everywhere and you can't figure out where they all go. This is as simple as it gets. It's not even really a complicated engine. It's not intimidating at all. You can't mix up any of these connectors. It's it's just straightforward. All right, Rusty, you ready? I'm ready. How many times have you done this? Too many. <laughs> so this is O-ringed on the bottom, so we don't need your traditional Mercedes gaskets. Also gotta be really careful though. Come on, baby. I just wanna live inside of here. It's so nice. We, sh we should stick a camera inside of here too. It's like bigger than your upper body. It is. There's like a lot of room in here. We could stick like a bunch of GoPros inside and watch the valves do cool valvey things. They like to move up and down sometimes. Seriously, you could stick a GoPro in here and just watch valves. That's awesome. Here's what the snout looks like. This is so cool. And this is still using the traditional factory. How many ribs are these Mercedes ones? I don't know, six rib belts. Uh, so eventually they're gonna go to an eight rib. We'll kind of see how this works out in a low boost setting, but this is a pretty large pulley just for now. Um, but at this point we can bolt this guy in and then we have Hellcat intercoolers that are just gonna go right in these slots here It's gonna be pretty neat. Hey, I got the same o-ring kit. Yeah. This is a lifesaver. I love this thing I've gone through a couple of these at the shop. They're great. We got some new o-rings on the bolts here And here is the intake air temperature sensor that Rusty was talking about where he extended out the harness so You can see it on this side very easy to access just like pretty much everything, even with this blower. So very little torque is needed with the rubber seal, which is nice and it's reusable. So it's environmentally friendly. I'm trying to save the world with blowers. Might as well be a green blower. So on most uh, intake manifolds or superchargers, you would torque the intake from inside to outside. So it's an even clamping force. Uh, for whatever reason, Mercedes decides on these engines, you start at one end at opposite ends and you work your way across both, uh, both cylinder heads. Next up, we have the intercoolers and these are straight Hellcat intercoolers. No modifications at all. So these are the same ends that they use. This is a seal right here. And they're basically just drop in in two seconds and go. And for those of you who have worked on cars that have water to air intercoolers, you know how difficult it is to get a good working system and how expensive they can be on my Lightning. If I wanna go with an aftermarket intercooler that isn't even much better than the factory one, it's like $1,000. Um, so I think these you can pick up at the dealer for like I think two, 250 each, something like that. And they're proven like crazy. Guys with Hellcats, you know, 1,000 horsepower all day with these. All right, second Hellcat intercooler going in. And this is obviously designed for the intercooler, so all these grooves are perfectly matched. Just kind of pull it forward a little bit. And there we go. Beautiful. Oh, and this is a sight glass so you can check the oil in the supercharger. Oh, and it might look low right now, but that's because this supercharger is actually flipped upside down. So you fill it right side up and then for this application, they're running it upside down. So we need to hold these intercoolers down and these are more factory Hellcat parts. And they fit in just like this. And then we have one on this side as well. You got a little bit of Loctite on there also. All right, so we're lubricating these seals right now on the intercooler, and we're about to attach it to the heat exchanger. And for that, we have this. So this was a big deal. The guys told me they had made a few different versions of this, and this one by far was the easiest to work with. It is now a bolt-on piece, just like that. Very serviceable, very easy to remove if you need to get to anything as well. Nice. God, it's just so cool to be part of this right now. Coming from a tech's perspective, everything has instruction manuals and it just is how it is. But this was specifically designed by people I know 
over the course of three years. I mean, a lot of time went into all of this. I mean, it's basically all done right now, but hundreds of hours went into this, probably thousands of hours. Every little part had to be thought of and sourced, and it's just, it's coming together beautifully, and I'm just, God, I just feel honored, honestly, just being here. This is so cool. All right, so we get to install the fuel pressure sensor now in hopes that it is perfectly in the right spot so they can make the fuel rail right now. And it looks good. Is this connector gonna fit though? These are like the little things. Like, does it need to be tweaked a little bit? We're gonna find out. Kinda want it to sit in there nice and snug. Oh, this is great. Oh yeah, good clearance is perfect. All right, so we've installed these three little supports right here. This is for the lid to lay on and it kinda just supports that large surface area and gives it a little bit of extra strength. All right guys, it's time for the lid. Look at this beautiful piece of billet aluminum. So beautiful. 6.2 liters supercharged by VRP. And it just simply rests on like this. And again, another rubber seal, but look at this. This is so cool. It's so big too, but it's also low profile. Like this is where the hood seals. There's plenty of room. So you could run this supercharger on a bunch of different models that have this engine. Some pretty sweet hardware here. All right, it's time to get the belt on. And gotta get it on the alternator, okay. Man, this looks like such a small belt for this. And we'll see how this works out. So these are the hoses from the intercooler to the heat exchanger, which we still need to install right around here. So this is your typical Bosch 010 pump, just like an E55 would have. And we're putting some throttle bodies in now. I connect back here. So this has dual 85 millimeter throttle bodies. That is a lot of air, guys. Like an upgrade on my Escalade that has the big Magnuson supercharger. An upgrade is a 100 millimeter. I think that's as big as it goes. And we have 285s. So 170 millimeters of, of air opening. This will obviously all be finalized for the kits once they go up for sale again. This is all prototype, okay? Prototype, so there'll be a proper intake. All the fuel rails will be figured out. And for now, this is the only reservoir for the cooling system for the intercooler. Uh, and it's just kind of hanging out right here, so that'll be finished as well. Uh, this is really just a test run so we can get it on the dyno, get it on the road, see what she's made of. All right, it's heat exchanger time. So this is also an E55 heat exchanger. Universal, basically. All right, we're just hooking up the hoses right now. Uh, I just gotta get this bottom guy on there. Come on, baby. Get on, we wanna hear you. All right, it's getting pretty late again. We have been working into the night on some of these videos. A lot of off-camera stuff when it gets dark because the lighting isn't the best, but we are firing this up tonight. We'll do the tune and dyno and everything tomorrow for us, like, you know, just a few scenes from now for you guys, but we're almost there. Look at this monster. <laughs> All right, we're filling up the cooling system right now. See, it's what's nice about having something not permanently mounted yet. You can just pick it up, more gravity feeding. Do you know what that reservoir's from? What can is you, it? Can you guess? It's a uh, Mercedes something, right? Yeah, it's it's from a bi-turbo. Like, like a non-AMG? No, it's from an uh, AMG, but the 5.5. Five, five, five. Five. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. It sits in the uh, valley for the split cooling of a twin turbo Mercedes. Okay, so it's doing exactly what it's meant to do. 100%. Yeah, it just and means... it's an OEM part. Right. Honestly, it wouldn't really be bad. It'd probably work fine. Oh, this this setup could be driven every day. Yeah. Um, like, but... if this was just mounted somewhere, it, it would be good, but I would probably want to get a like a trunk tank or a killer chiller or something. Um, I, w I sent him measurements. We're going to try to make an underhood tank for above the battery. It, does, it doesn't need much, especially if you're going to add like a killer chiller or something like that. How do you think the intake air temps and cooling is going to be just as is right now? I don't even want to guess. Because <laughs> it's so di this blower is so much more efficient and just such a different platform. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna you know find out. There's a lot of unknowns here. A lot. Like what kind of power is this thing gonna make? We're only gonna be on like four or five psi though, right? With this pulley. Um, we we really we really don't know. It, it could be eight. It could be one. Uh, there's no there's no math right now for this blower or anything to to even speculate. So, one to ten. All right, it's bumper time, people. We have the cooling system all bled out. Plug it in some fog lights, and it is starting to rain. That's okay. Okay. So I gotta say, the white on black is awesome. And this has pano roof, black interior. This is definitely my color combo. Big fan of the old white and black supercharged V8 vehicles, like my wife's Escalade. 
It's basically the same thing. All right, it's first start time. You excited? Uh, nervous. Nervous? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Okay. Something. I Sounded think, cool. Yeah. Did they, you hear that? It's like a siren. <laughs> it's like, help me. Something. <laughs> I'll, I'll start it one more time and then I'll, I'll scan it and see if anything's come up. All right. That was much better. But it's very quiet, that's for sure. Fans kicking on right away, and it's totally cold. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. The engine fans just kicked on full blast. I had the air conditioning on. Oh, okay, okay. These things sound so good. It's running a little rich right now. It is a cold start. This thing hasn't ran in like 24 hours. It's starting to get better. Okay, a little boggy there. It's got a little dead spot. The throttle body's not responding. Really? Oh, there we go. It's, a, it's like hesitant. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what these guys are doing. Um, we'll pop these air filters off real quick. All right, we're gonna take a look at what's going on here with the throttle bodies. This fan is still on. AC is off. Um, all right, you wanna turn the key on and just uh, open, the, press the gas? There we go. Huh. And I can hear this one going too. It seems to be working at idle. All right, we're gonna unplug these mass airflow sensors, throw the engine into speed density mode so that we can run it. And we'll see with it running if those open up. All right, Craig, fire it up whenever. They both work without the engine running. sensor codes, but what else we got? Probably got a lot of codes. Yeah, the, the position of the throttle body is short circuit to positive. I think that extension harness is is messing with it. One of them is directly hardwired, right? And then yeah. the other one's extended off of that? Yeah. So here's an extension harness for the other throttle body. And it connects there, goes to the other one. Could be an issue with that. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this extension harness right now. And it's not going to look pretty, but just for testing purposes, we're just going to run it direct. We only had the extension harness to run it that way near the firewall just so it looked pretty. And we'll see what happens now. We'll just hook everything up properly. Rusty's plugging everything back in right now. Look at this pano roof suede headliner. Baby stuff. How many miles are on this thing? 90? 90, it was 94 right? the last time I checked. I know you bought it a few. Oh, yeah. 95. I bought it with 30,000 miles originally. 30,000? Yeah. Man, you drove this thing. Yeah, hard. <laughs> no trans work? Nope. Sock trans? Nope. Sock trans, original trans. Um, this has the MCT trans. Ships A lot of good. maintenance. Just changing fluid yeah, all the time? Yeah, just taking care of the fluid and doing the filters. This has race star too, doesn't it? It does. Oh, yeah. I got to yeah. try that. Yeah, we'll have to play with that. Got an eject button as well, just in case... You don't like the guy sitting next to you. All right, so it's time just to blow out all of these codes. No codes. That's a nice sight on a Mercedes. All right, let's see what we got now. No extension harness. Oh, it, it idles great. This is just on a bass tune. The throttle response is like instant. This sounds so good. Hey Alex, what'd you say? I don't even know. Woo! That is some M156 love right there. You don't really hear any blower noise. I can't wait to hear it under load though. All right, so we're gonna be going for a ride now in the E63 with our HP tuners, so we're gonna be data logging, and that way we can send that to the tuner and make some adjustments. What in the world? 
Craig, before we do anything, I, I mean, I think you owe the audience an explanation. What is Soylent? Banana? Natural? Fla- what? 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 It's a meal replacement. Okay, Dude. I'm on a diet. You're better than this, Craig. <laughs> you have a supercharged D63. I'm, I'm trying to be better than this. All right. You know what? Hang, hang on. Get, get that Soylent, Soylent out of here. Jeez. I'm doing the best I can over here, I right? I so. I work late hours. So I actually tuned my 9-second Turbo Trans Am with HP Tuner, so I'm pretty familiar. Oh, uh, right now, we are recording already. We can stop it by pressing stop, but we don't want to do that. Um, so let's see. What is Craig set up to record? We have engine RPM, vehicle speed, knock retard, big one, engine coolant, intake air temp, also a big one, uh, and mass airflow. Lots of cool graphs. It's actually really fun once you get to know this software and to be able to tune your own car. Wait, hold on, you're in comfort, dude. Can I can I go oh, uh, straight plus. up Sport Plus? And this thing has race start too. I want to facelift C63. Yeah, you need it. I do. Man, it is, it is dangerous around here, dude. And you just gotta, you gotta get while the getting's good. I mean, there's all these hills and stuff and you're just pulling out and they're going like 40, 50 miles an hour. I mean, you need, you basically, that's why you did the supercharger, right? So you, you could get out of the... You need that low-end torque yeah, to yeah, really get out get out of the shop. It's a really, the supercharger's mostly for safety out here. It's driving perfectly. Like, drivability is spot on right now. No bucking, surging. Right now, it feels like a totally stock car. It's not even that loud or anything. And this is a single bass tune from VRP. Um, the only check engine light we have is, I haven't coded out the... Uh, intake manifold runners, the plastic flaps. Uh, the, I haven't coded out that actuator, so it, it's like knows they're not there, and that's the only code that's coming back. So it's I'm really impressed with how it's it's driving. And this has the same wet clutch transmission as the C63 from earlier. Um, this and the SL63 were the first Mercedes models uh, with the MCT. And some of the early cars, they didn't necessarily have problems. The sales department had a problem in explaining to the consumer that you were you were getting a different style converter that was going to be a little jerky, and they uh, they didn't like that in the beginning. I remember as a dealer tech, we had to flash a bunch of updates to try and soften it and everything like that. And it's just the nature of the transmission. There's no more converter. So something we're keeping a close eye on is intake air temp. We're only at 100 degrees. Uh, it's probably about 70 degrees outside. 82. Oh, it's 82 today. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Wow, I'm way off. It's 82 today, so that's even better. 100 degrees is not bad, and this is just with that little reservoir. We don't even have a trunk tank or anything big yet, so that's a good sign. I'm going to do a little pool here if you're good. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Right, cool. oh, 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 oh. I'm really good. <laughs> Jeez, all right, dude. <laughs> Jesus. That is fast. Are you kidding me? Yeah, she, she, she moves. Up. Dude, I love, by the way, this whole country road thing going on. This is awesome. This car is unbelievable. It feels so crisp and clean, and it, it's just perfect. And this is the bass tune. Okay, so the, the computer flew away from me here. Luckily, we're recording because I was not paying attention to any of this. Oh my gosh. It never stops. Oh, they're like, they're, the power band is just like, yes. Wow. Can I drive? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, it's tight. Oh, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good car. The car's in great condition, it handles really well. But just the, the power delivery, even when you're not at wide open throttle, it feels so good. Like the throttle response and just how quickly it revs up. And that's a characteristic of the M156. It's one of my favorite naturally aspirated engines, even though it's kind of unreliable. But when I had my white C63, granted it wasn't anywhere near the fastest car I owned, it would just put a smile on my face. I mean, the fact that it would rev past 7,000 RPM, dual overhead cam, big V8, it's a 6.2. Craig, what do you think about me giving it some beans, as you say? I would send it. Like a little bit of beans? All the beans. All the beans. Oh, no traction. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. It was just spinning the whole time and flickering the little, you're doing silly stuff light. All right, how do we do that in this car? All right, we're in Mustang mode now. Mustang crowd mode. This has a factory LSD rear end, right? Um, 
This one does not actually. Really? I... <laughs> Maybe it needs that traction control. Okay, yeah, we have absolutely no traction with this car. Oh, okay, okay. That is scary. Oh, Jesus! Can I have this? Oh, I need to get a blower like this on an M156 car. That would like, oh man. I'm telling you, if, if, if you guys want an answer to how, how do we get world peace? It's just, just get everybody together to drive a car like this. Okay, this would bring the people together. I'm telling you. It gets the people going. It gets like the people Will going, Farrell, that's Will right. Farrell says. Just a leisurely drive and, where are we again? Martinsburg. Martinsburg, <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> These roads are so much fun out here. Kind of a little dangerous for a city slicker like myself. I gotta, I gotta take it easy. There's a lot of these hills, not anything this small, but like stuff you can't see the other side of. But this is beautiful out here, man. This is so nice. I love the little rev match it gives you. Oh, this is so cool. This is why the electric cars won't take over people. I don't care. The plaid runs like basically an eight second quarter mile. Doesn't matter. They just, they don't, they don't make noises. They don't have this feel. A thousand bucks or best offer for this RV and it says it's got a 454. You know you're in the country when they're listing the cubic inch of the engine in the only part of the description of the for sale ad. Craig's back in the driver's seat here. I just gotta say, man, this is just gorgeous out here. You guys are lucky, these, these roads are so cool. I mean, I just get potholes and like crime. We <laughs> and crime, we, we do have some uh, nice windy, beautiful roads back here. Look, I mean, look at this, this is unreal. Uh, it's so beautiful that we got lost <laughs> and we got to the end, end of the line there. We ran out of road. And now we're just gonna have to go off-roading. It's the warp speed the blower sent us through. That's right. We're in a different dimension now. I feel different. <laughs> and we're 11 minutes away. Oh wow, we're actually kind of far from the shop. <laughs> We've drifted drifted away here in West Virginia. All right guys, if we could ever make it back to the shop, we're gonna check our data logs, uh, and then we're heading right to the dyno. All right, we just got to the dyno, and if you guys are wondering what Craig has let me borrow for the five days that I'm here, it's an ML55. Just like the one I have. I can't believe how well this is doing on a base too. And it feels so good. Oh man, we got some serious cars here. SRT8 Grand Cherokee. We got a CTS-V on a gigantic Hoosier Slick. A Pontiac G8, which is basically a shorter Caprice with a much nicer interior. This is Alex from the Hey, Street what's going on, Alex? Alex? How are you? Oh, nice to meet you, man. Thanks for letting us use the dyno. Oh, all the time. This guy, is, he's a little special like this one. A like. little bit. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel too. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding, we love you buddy. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> so right now we're running an 82 millimeter, basically test pulley on this three liter Whipple supercharger. And VRP is gonna do the 72 millimeter uh, after we get some data logging and tuning on the dyno here. And it's also gonna go to an eight rib, so kind of a more serious belt setup. Um, but this is a prototype we're still testing. And this is the first time this thing's been on the dyno. All right, what kind of dyno is this? So this is a Mustang dyno. Uh, yeah. When we did the Whipple on my 855, I made 637 horsepower here, and then uh, just so we could tell the difference in other dynos, we drove to a dyno jet, no changes, and we made almost 680 horsepower. Oh wow! So this one, you know, this one makes hurt your feelings when you when it's you a, dyno it's a here. Heartbreaker dyno. Yep. You know how it goes. My baby's mama's brother's uncle's dog made more power with less mods on every dyno video. You will get that in the comments, guaranteed. If you don't believe me, check out the comments right now, or after we dyno it, then there'll be comments after that. <laughs>
insane. I'll tell you, that makes our hearts skip a beat. No way. Yeah. 567 oh. wheels? That's on like oh, four and a half PSI. All right, yep, and let's look at that. Let's look at the graph. It felt good. 632 yeah. foot pounds of torque. What was AFR on that? Right here. 11.5, 11, oh, it was perfect. perfect. 11.7, they got the 11.7. 11.4, AFRs were dead on. No. They got the, they got the 11.7 up top, which he, that's why it makes it perfect. Can you perfect. pull that thing? You're yeah, yeah. here. We need the guy. Dude, that, that bass tune is like solid. I am really happy with those numbers. Wow. That's the first pull three years in the making on that kit, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't know who, who, who's yeah. happier. <laughs> I might. I think I am. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's me. It's his car. He's got it on his car, but you know, yep. it's like your baby. It is. Dude, congratulations, Thank man. You very that much. is Appreciate insane it. power. Wow. That's 600 there's, horsepower on a fucking dyna or on a dyna jet. No, stop swearing, Craig. It's a family there's, show. There's so much more left in it with a smaller pulley on there. You know, 11 psi. I, I think we can pick up a considerable amount of power. Dude, this that. thing is gonna do like 800 wheels. It's gonna basically the blower will make. Whatever the engine can handle, right? We're gonna find out. Oh, Stay tuned. I want one of these blowers so bad. Well, you're gonna get one. Oh my <laughs> god, this is gonna be crazy. I, don't, I gotta go buy an M156 car. Let me know in the comments what should I get? Because this thing will fit on like pretty much everything, right? Everything. Yeah, he kind of designed it for a few different models, so it shouldn't have an issue going on anything. C63, E63, ML, an ML63, that'd be cool. What M156 car would you like to see? on the channel with one of these blowers. Comment down below. And let me know if you have an M156 car that you're selling, preferably a broken one, like bad head bolts, lifters, cams, something like that. I, I wanna fix it first. I don't even know what to say. Like, I love blower wine, but man, if you wanna go stealth mode, this is it. You can't hear really anything at all. I mean, this is nuts, and it's not like there's some kind of restrictive intake or anything. You know, obviously this is kind of prototype, so this isn't a completed intake system, but this is essentially how it's gonna sound no matter what you do. Hill has a 3D printed section that'll go here and actually connect with some tubes, so it'll be kind of the factory ram air system, if you will. Um, but either way, I mean, this is this is just how it sounds. Yeah, I'm curious on intake air temps. Put your finger like on the, where the intercooler is. Like, it is not no way hot at all. Especially are over you where kidding the coolers me? are. We drove this car like half hour here, and it took us maybe 10 minutes to get it all set up on the dyno. This is ridiculous. The fuel rails are hotter than the inter than the supercharger. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, this is the coolant going in and that's without a trunk tank or anything. We're just using this brake fluid reservoir size split cooling system just temporarily. So once this thing gets more capacity, it's gonna run even cooler, but it's just so efficient. And the Hellcat intercoolers just work great. They've been proven to support a ton of horsepower. I don't know if this kit will be fully released by the time this video comes out, but it is coming out soon. I'm gonna leave a link down below to vrpspeed.com. Um, and you can, they can join a mailer list, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you guys wanna hop on the mailing list, then you'll be notified as soon as this kit is released to the public. Um, but this is a serious game changer. Two days ago, they're like, Alex, we're just gonna finish up a few things on this and it's ready to go. And I'm like, you guys have been working on this for like three years. There's no way we're gonna like run into a million bugs. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing just performed immediately on the bass tune. We haven't had one issue all day. We've just been flogging this car. <laughs> We've been driving, <laughs> driving three years worth. Yeah, this right. Car. Ninety-five thousand mile E sixty-three uh, stock engine, right? Stock bottom end, yep, just stock, head studs. Uh, head, VRP head studs um, and some parts to keep the cams in there a little bit more secure. We got uh, titanium hardware. Okay. But but no real modification. Stock cams. Stock cams. Wow. Yep. Unreal. All right, run number two. We let it cool down for about ten minutes. We'll see what she makes now. Charge like not, you can't even hear it a little bit. Yeah, the exhaust is a little louder, but. But still, there's no whine whatsoever. That is so weird. How'd we do? Oh no! No, almost 600 wheel. Whoa! 
that was with a little cooldown, 650 foot pounds. This is wheel horsepower on a loaded Mustang dyno. It's learning. It's still learning, learning the yep. tune. So I did a great job. 600 <laughs> horsepower on a Mustang. <laughs> what? I gotta say, this is probably the most fun I've ever had at a dyno, and it's not even my car. This is unreal to see this. Just to let you know, a stock M156 equipped E63 does, I think, about 420 wheel horsepower on a dyno like this. So, I mean, we're talking close to a 200 horsepower gain. Wow. I cannot believe I'm doing this right now, touching this. This is crazy. It was rich right here. Uh -huh. it, it leans down just a little bit. Uh -huh. Smart. The math is clean. O2 is clean. The map, the map KPA is 126. What is that? 126 KPA? It's 18.2. Yeah. And then you take 14.5 from that. Right. And you're under 4. You're un yeah, we're like under 4 PSI, really? 3.7 PSI. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is uh, Or what do you think about this, man? Isn't this crazy? Very crazy. Because you're into the Vs and all this modern kind of supercharged stuff. Yes. Like, that's insane power. Yeah, it's clean. Full fuel. But no yes, real tuning. Uh, this was just the base tune. Like yeah, no revision. Seven, zero. No revision. So, how much boost did he see? I mean, the Less fuel, than 4 PSI. You had 78% due cycle in fuel, but that's not bad. Let's check out knock. Let's see how you're doing now. I don't, I don't want to know that. Zero knock all the way. No knock? No knock. No knock. Zero knock. He even had a negative three on one. It wasn't pulling any time nope, in at all. Nope. I mean, this is basically, it's just, top, it's just perfect. Yeah. So number three. I am very impressed. Yeah. If you guys haven't noticed. Intake air temp was one, was very, that's what was the key. Intake air temp was 100. All the way up to, all the way up to 108. It got to 113, 117 at the end of the pool. That was the key. What does the CTS, what does a modified CTSV get up to at? Oh, like 128, 130. All right, they, my, they get, yeah. my, my turbo Trans Am gets up to like 140 on the dyno. No, it, it does. And this, this is key. Intake air temp, that was the key. It started oh, at 100. And what did it end at? 117. Well, your other one started at 117. Yeah, so we don't put a killer so, chill. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do anything to this, dude. It's like, it's done. Yeah. I would, I would, it went I would 70 degrees the whole way. I, mean, uh. time, I would maximize your, where the wheels at right now, and that was a good bolt-on safe kit, put it on the car, just like that. That is, like, safer than safe. I safer can't make safe. something yeah. I mean, safer I'm looking at everything. The tuner has this thing real safe. So, he knows. So it's Irv approved is what you're saying. Oh, definitely. 2JZ approved and LS approved. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what he builds all day. So Irv is an LS 2JZ guy. Craig is basically a Mercedes guy at this point. I'm kind of a little bit of a mutt of everything, but we all get along. We do what we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we help each other out. On this alone, you got room. Yeah. yeah, and then we throw a little bit bigger injectors in, some E85. There you go. Oh, man. And then, man. I, can, then I can maybe race your Camaro or something. Yeah, oh, you can. I mean, why not? Let's do it. I wish I had my Z here. I was going to bring my Z. I don't know one mile from here. Wait, wait, what my, kind of Z? What are we talking 2J. about? 2J. Like 1,200 yeah, horsepower. It's, it's got a race back. It got a race. Yeah, it's road. I thought you were going to say Z28. Nah. No, this he, is a well, 2J. You got a Camaro. I mean, yeah, I yeah, I got a Camaro, but I got the 2J, the monster in the box. Is this your car? Wait, this, this is a 1,000 horsepower car? Yeah. Wow. It just sounds so tame and normal. It's, yeah. not, it's not tame and normal, is it? <laughs> oh, dude. That cluster is awesome. Wow, look at that. Okay. I can smell the E85. Makes sense now. Yeah, you can smell the E85 big time. Wow. That's a big old Borg Warner. What, uh, what did it put down on your dyno? 982. Wow. 982 to the wheel. 950. 44 pounds of boost, 982. On a dial she does over a thousand. For sure. Yeah. Wow. And it seems very streetable. Oh, it is. You know. Very legit street cars, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I had it for 29 years. Oh, man. So it's yeah. gone through probably a few setups. Yeah, yeah my, uh, my son is 29. I had it when he was born. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Does that got a 2JZ? Yeah. Uh, 2JZ Lexus SC300. Oh, man. Beautiful. I love the color. Is that factory paint? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's rare. You never see them like that. Those are built. They're usually beat up. Yeah. So you're copying, like, basically the same kind of setup, essentially? I think um, what works, works, right? 
this is a new motor. I blew it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to do is copy that. Yeah. All right, we just made it back with the E63. Perfect, right? All is good. It's like another 45 minute drive. Just like this thing has been an absolute monster this entire day. It's been beaten on out in the country roads, the dyno, and just no issues whatsoever. Let's pop the hood. Let's check the belt. There's got to be something. I know they've been working on building this for so long, but really for the first run of this complete system, this is very impressive. Now that they know everything works, it's just a matter of little things like figuring out the proper harness for there, the intake, and you know, whatever. These are the 3D printed adapters though. They're gonna fit the actual intake. So it'll be nice and clean and factory and utilize the Mercedes Ram air effect. So it'll get some cold air in there. Not that it's really needed because this works great. I mean, seriously, just got off the highway, no problem. It kind of like doesn't make any sense, but the intake air temperatures are perfect. I don't know, I don't know. All right guys, that'll do it for this video. It's really late at night and I should probably get back to the hotel work on some video stuff and get some sleep because we got a long day tomorrow, but uh, I'm a little bit too jacked up. 600 wheel horsepower on three PSI. 600, on this it's giant just... pulley. <laughs> I know, right? Like the tiniest belt ever, no slip. All right, I could go on and on forever about this, but uh, we have another video here in West Virginia. So this is video three of the three part series for the C63 slash E63 now, since that's got a second bad motor. Um, but I did find a ride back to Chicago. I bought another car. It's really, really cool. I'll give you one little hint. It's one of my favorite cars of all time and I kind of already own one. And at the end of this outro, I'm gonna start this thing up and you guys let me know in the comments section what you think it is. So stay tuned for a fourth video out here with Modern Masters in West Virginia. It's gonna be a good one. And then I'm driving this like sight unseen bought type of car back to Chicago. Hopefully I make it. You'll make it. We got it. It's an it. awesome car. It is, but we haven't looked at it yet. So you never know. It could be a basket case. Um, I don't know, just like the C63. So anyway, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this series so far. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Follow Modern Masters. I'll leave all their links down below. Subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day or night. I will see all of you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to click that link down below. Use coupon code LEGIT15 for 15% off your very own phone mount from ProClip USA.